Welcome to this lecture on gender and diversity issues in STEM communication. In this module, we are going to learn specifically and exactly how gender and diversity issues help us to communicate better in different STEM disciplines. Generally, we believe that all written and spoken communication should be culturally sensitive, should be as concise as possible, as simple as possible, should be unbiased concrete and vivid in describing uh, what one wishes to express, whether in written or oral communication. We believe that being sensitive to gender and diversity issues, that is making a conscious attempt to be considerate of other people's beliefs, norms, traditions and so on, these help us to achieve the above goal of communication being concise, simple concrete, unbiased and so on. Essentially, all scientific communication should be inclusive rather than exclusive, that is they should not reflect existing social or societal biases. What we mean by insensitive or biased language is language that relies on certain unfounded assumptions including negative descriptions, stereotypes and so on. Any language that is sexist or ageist or insensitive to people of different backgrounds including physical disability, ethnicity, race and so on, these are referred to as insensitive communication. While such communication is rampant in society around us, as academics and professionals, it is expected that we maintain a high standard and therefore, from a scientific communication perspective as well any insensitive language because they are based on unfounded assumptions, they are best avoided. One example of insensitive or biased language is with reference to sexist pronouns. For example, the exclusive use of he, him and so on when talking about both men and women, that is the use of masculine pronouns to refer to both men and women or to refer to all human beings including the third gender, that is considered to be sexist and such language is not acceptable in academic or professional in scientific communication. So, why and how are these issues important in scientific communication? So, we wish to suggest that this is more than just political correctness though that is not a bad reason either. All good communication that is all good technical communication always communicates without ambiguity, without vagueness and with absolute clarity. What we are trying to tell you is that calling attention to gender, ethnicity, religion etcetera when not specifically appropriate for the situation that is when your focus is not on gender, ethnicity, religion in technical communication but unconsciously it creeps into your language, then it takes the focus of your scientific aspect of the communication and a lot of research has shown that this dilutes the effectiveness of communication despite the excellent quality of what one wishes to say. Let me give you an example. So, the first five sentences that you see on this screen, these are from a textbook on environmental studies at the school level. If you read this sentences, they appear to be about human efforts related to environmental conservation and disasters. However, in my own experience and through similar kinds of experiments, it has been shown that people reading these sentences get diverted because of the language used. You will notice that in all five sentences, the reference to human beings in general of all genders is through the use of exclusive masculine nouns and pronouns such as man and he. So, somebody who reads this will ask a question about whether only men do all of these or women do all of these. So, you can see that from a focus on environmental issues the reader can shift to 
issues related to gender inequality and discrimination and in the use of language. Therefore, purely from the perspective of conveying effectively the message that we wish to convey, it is essential that we use more gender sensitive language in our communication. For example, look at the sentences at the bottom of the screen, which is from an article written by Azim Premji, who is not only a philanthropist and an industrialist, but has done enormous amount of work in the field of education, primary education, rural education and education for girl children. You can see in the first sentence, Azim Premji is referring to children as her, because he wants to sensitize us to the fact that in general there is bias in the use of our language, where we use masculine nouns and pronouns to refer to both male and female children. Secondly, he wants to sensitize us to the fact that female children are more deprived than male children in most parts of the world, including in India. In the second sentence, Azim Premji is using what is called as a pronoun pair, himself, herself, because he wants us to understand that using gender insensitive language is not acceptable, especially in a context where there is a lot of discrimination towards girls and women in Indian society. So, we are suggesting that using exclusive masculine nouns and pronouns or other kinds of words to refer to all human beings is unacceptable. And to avoid this, there are some people who use exclusively female nouns and pronouns like, such as in the first example given here, where uh, the sentence talks about the writer citing her own text. So, here what the author of this sentence is trying to do is to reverse the normal practice of using exclusively masculine nouns and pronouns, so that we then begin to notice that there is something wrong about the way in which we use language. This is not simply again as I said earlier about political correctness, because we are trying to be inclusive and in the business environment it could even be about attracting and retaining customers. So, in this sentence below which is taken from a Microsoft manual, you can see that the manual refers to the user as his or her, as in to loosen settings on his or her own computer. So, essentially it is about ensuring that the people who are addressing are included in your communication and therefore, your own communication is much more effective in terms of conveying a certain message. Increasingly, many academic bodies are advising and providing guidelines in all kinds of educational material that this kind of gender and diversity issue is included in scientific communication. So, in India, the National Council for Educational Research and Training has put in place a set of guidelines to avoid all kinds of stereotypes relating to caste, creed, religion in all kinds of educational material, whether it is textbooks or even uh, electronic material. And to also ensure that there is no over or under representation of different kinds of groups in a country as diverse as India. And there are no untrue generalizations. For example, showing men always as reading newspapers or women always as cooking are untrue generalizations about what human beings in general do. At the international level, professional academic bodies such as the IEEE or the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and numerous other journals and academic bodies also have provided guidelines to ensure that gender and diversity issues are incorporated in a sensitive manner in scientific communication. Apart from the need to ensure clarity and effectiveness of communication, insensitive use of language also is seen to send discriminatory or negative messages to other people. So, whether it is children reading textbooks or students being addressed in a classroom, insensitive use of language can send negative messages to other people. And there are a number of studies which show that people from minority groups, people from marginalized groups, people who are poor uh, or uh, girl children, their learning self esteem and career choices are affected by insensitive language. And therefore, overall society suffers from a lack of diversity in various STEM professions. At the workplace also, it is found 
that insensitive language affects interaction with co-workers and relationship with clients affecting both work, the workplace effectiveness as well as businesses in general. This is the reason why we feel that there is a need for general guidelines as well as specific guidelines for written and spoken language that are culturally and sensitive, culturally and socially sensitive. All communication should build credibility to ensure that people trust what you have to say and all communication should be appropriate, accurate and show that you as an individual have conviction for your topic. Therefore, uh, it helps you to demonstrate your own trustworthiness and people will be more willing to listen to you and to read to you. One important way of doing this is to in incorporate gender and diversity issues in all kinds of scientific communication. We generally are advised that we should support our claims in a convincing manner and in communication we should appeal to common goals and values that we all share whether it is about the value of science or the uses of science, technology and engineering for everyday uh, life. These can be better achieved if we are more sensitive in our communication, if we are more aware of gender and diversity issues in the workplace, in dealing with clients and collaborators and in interacting with various funding agencies and government officials. Let us do a few classroom exercises to try and understand how different kinds of biases and stereotypes creep into our thinking both consciously and unconsciously. If you do this kind of an exercise and ask somebody to guess the occupation of these two persons, generally people will say that the person on the right is a scientist or a doctor or an academic or a professor of some kind, whereas the person on the left is a socialite or is a sports person of some kind. It is possible that both of them may be scientists, it is possible that the person on the right is not really a scientist but is an actor. So, our assumptions are based on a lot of factors. However, in scientific communication assumptions have to be explicit or assumptions have very little role. Whatever we communicate has to have a solid basis in evidence, in proof. Therefore, the kind of stereotype that is reflected in this kind of an exercise is something that is best avoided in scientific communication. So, a lot of experiments have been conducted around the world popularly referred to as draw a scientist test where it is generally shown that when a person is asked to draw a scientist still there are certain stereotypical images especially focusing on the gender of the scientist. It is therefore important that these kinds of stereotypes are avoided in all kinds of communication and we ourselves sensitize uh, ourselves to these kinds of stereotypes, so that we do not bring them into our communication unconsciously. One can do other kinds of exercises also, so you can ask yourself this question, which of these black or white has a positive connotation? Most people will say white for very many different reasons, very few will say black or take this exercise, the picture on the left is of an earthworm picture on the right is of a parrot. So, if you ask yourself or if you ask somebody about which image gives you more positive feelings and which is more repugnant, most people will say the picture on the right that of the parrot because it is more aesthetically pleasing gives one positive feelings. However, all of these whether one is talking of colors or one is talking of creatures, these are matters of perspective. It is possible that both black and white could be beautiful and could give us positive connotations. And if you look at it from a farmer's perspective, an earthworm is much more useful for human beings than a parrot which is actually a pest for most, most farmers. So, what we are suggesting is that the kind of stereotypes that are in our minds have to be avoided in scientific communication. So, that the being sensitive to existing inequalities that much more useful for society at large. And it makes the people listening to us reading our uh, material to get a more positive idea of both STEM disciplines and the benefits of STEM for society at large. It encourages more people to take up STEM careers. Thank you.